Hey Java developers, Virtual Threads became a final feature in JDK 21 and the start of a new chapter of concurrency in Java. However, with the start of this new chapter comes new questions, like what's the best way to create new virtual threads? Add rate limiting, configure the number of platform threads that are created, and how to debug virtual threads when something goes wrong. We're going to look at answers to all these questions in this video, so let's get started. Most developers will not need to interact with threads directly, and instead, underlying frameworks will create threads as needed. For example, Tom, Ketty, and Jetty will create a virtual thread for each new incoming request. However, if there is a part of your code that could benefit from being broken into individual tasks and executed concurrently, consider using an executor service for creating virtual threads. The executors class was updated with a new method, new virtual thread per task executor. This new method returns an executor service that will create a new virtual thread whenever submit or execute is called. The executor service is auto-closable, so can be wrapped in a try block to have it automatically closed, though in most cases you will likely want the executor service existing for the lifetime of your application. Note though that this is mostly a temporary solution until structured concurrency becomes a final feature. For more on structured concurrency, check out this video from my colleague, Jose Palmard. When I presented on virtual threads, a frequent question was how to ensure an external service doesn't get overwhelmed with requests. The answer to that question would be to use a semaphore. Semaphores work like pools, but instead of pooling a scarce resource like connections or like threads were before virtual threads, remember, don't pool virtual threads. They're not a scarce resource. Semaphores pool permits, which is simply a counter. To use a semaphore, configure the number of permits you want to allow, then wrap that call within you want rate limited between an acquire call, which takes a permit, and release, which, well, returns that permit. Once the permit limit is reached, additional calls will be blocked until permits become available, like in this example. Note that if you're already using a pool to manage connections to an external service, you probably shouldn't use a semaphore. You have a pool working within a pool. Instead, configure the existing connection pool to match the rate limit for that external service. Virtual threads run on top of platform threads, as I cover in this video. By default, the JDK will create a platform thread for every core on a system. The maximum number of platform threads that JDK will create by default will be 256. In the vast majority of cases, these defaults should work fine. However, if for some reason these defaults don't match your use case, they can be configured through the VM arguments, JDK virtual thread schedule parallelism, which configures the number of platform threads created per core, and JDK virtual thread scheduler max pool size, which sets the maximum number of platform threads to be created. As you begin working on applications that use virtual threads, or perhaps taking some of the examples in this video and incorporating them into your applications, you're eventually going to encounter some sort of issue. I know, hard to believe. When that happens, though, I have good news. Observability tools like JDK Flight Recorder, JFR, and JCMD already have been updated to support virtual threads. There are four new events added to JFR for virtual threads. JDK Virtual Thread Start, JDK Virtual Thread End, JDK Virtual Thread Pinned, and JDK Virtual Thread Submit Failed. By default, Virtual Thread Start and Virtual Thread End are disabled, but can be enabled through a JFR configuration file or JDK Mission Control. Threads, virtual threads can be viewed in thread dumps as well when executing a JCMD thread dump. This will include virtual threads that are blocked by network IO and threads created by an executor service. One of the reasons to use an executor service versus creating virtual threads manually. If you want to read more about these features covered in this video, be sure to read the article, link in the description. If you want to learn more about virtual threads, be sure to check out the video suggestions. And be sure to subscribe for more news and insights into the JDK. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and share with a friend. If you don't like this video, still leave a like, but then share with an enemy. Until next time, happy coding!